So my talk is called Using Vault with the Laravel app in OpenShift. And so have you ever wanted to securely store and manage static and dynamic secrets for Vault unaware applications running in OpenShift or Kubernetes? Does the term agent sidecar injector sound cool? Or what about mutating admission webhooks? So if you don't know what any of that means, don't worry. I'm going to explain all of it and kind of how this pattern can help you and your applications. So my name is Anand Kapoor. I work at HashiCorp on our implementation services team. Our team helps deploy, adopt, and scale our enterprise solutions. If you watch some of the earlier talks, shout out to Terraform Tom. I stole his description of our team. Uh, if you like dumb jokes and memes, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Arc Digital. So what does this mean and how can I use it? Let's imagine you've got an application and you want to securely store and manage its secrets. Maybe you don't have engineering time to integrate the Vault SDK, or maybe it's an off-the-shelf application where you can't really modify the code to integrate Vault. Or in the case of my example, maybe the overall architecture of your application doesn't easily allow the integration of Vault. So we're going to be deploying a PHP application. And because of PHP's shared nothing architecture, you can't just run a process within the Vault within the app to talk to Vault. You can't cache secrets in memory and refresh them periodic periodically like you would with other apps. And so the method I'm about to show you allows you to securely store and deliver both static and dynamic secrets to any of these applications using Vault. Now, we're going to be using Kubernetes. And so I'm going to try and keep all the Kubernetes jargon to a minimum since sometimes it gets really confusing. And <laughs> I think this tweet is, is really accurate. Um, so first, we're going to be using OpenShift. So OpenShift is just Kubernetes in the core with some add-ons and additions on top of it. We'll be using the Helm package manager for Kubernetes. We'll be using Kubernetes deployments. We'll be using Kubernetes service accounts. And we'll be using what's called a mutating admission webhook. And what that is, is that's basically a way that you can tell Kubernetes that when something happens, like we're creating or updating a pod, we want to call out somewhere else and allow that other service to modify our pod before it gets deployed. And what's cool about this is even though I'm going to be using OpenShift, all of these patterns apply to Kubernetes as well. So if you're using just standard Kubernetes or a different flavor of it, you should be able to apply all of this to your app as well. Then we'll be using Vault. And within Vault, we'll be using the Kubernetes auth method that will allow our containers to authenticate against Vault without having to pre-generate and provide tokens to them. We'll be using something called the Vault agent. We'll be using Vault agent templates. We'll be using dynamic secrets. And we'll be using what's called Vault KDS, which is a package created by HashiCorp to help run Vault within Kubernetes. And it provides some things like the Vault agent that we're going to be using. And lastly, we'll be deploying a Laravel app. So Laravel is a PHP framework. We're just going to be deploying a standard Laravel app with basically no modifications. And what's really cool about this method is this actually applies to almost any app that you might deploy. So whether it's a Python app or a Ruby app or a Node app, you can actually use a similar method to inject your secrets into your app using Vault and Kubernetes. So a quick overview of kind of what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be deploying our app into our Kubernetes cluster, and we're going to be using what's called the mutating webhook. And so we'll, we'll basically create some annotations that tell that webhook to start, to start working with our application. And what it's going to do is when we go to deploy our application, it will run another container alongside our application, and that's called a sidecar. And what that sidecar will do is it will actually run the vault agent within it. And the Vault agent is a process that authenticates with the Vault, and it manages refreshing the tokens, it manages fetching secrets, it manages uh, if your secrets expire, like when you have dynamic secrets for database credentials, it'll, it'll, it knows when those credentials expire, and it will go ahead and grab new ones. Once the Vault agent has your secrets, what it will do is it will actually take those secrets, and you can tell it how you want to render them. So in our case, we'll be rendering them out to a file which is then shared from that 
sidecar container into the container actually running our application using what's called an in-memory volume. So your secrets are, are only stored in memory. They're not stored, they're not persisted to disk or, or anything like that. So they, they stay secure, but they're able, your app is able to access them now. And you'll see down here, we have this init vault agent as well. So what happens is, is when you deploy your application, the vault agent will get deployed initially, grab your secrets and publish them to that in-memory volume so that when your app boots up, it has all of its secrets available to it. After it's running, then the vault agent will start running as a daemon in the, in the sidecar container so that it can update your secrets after that. So I figured we might as well just do it live. I'll just show you how it all works uh, in real time and hopefully everything goes well. So I'm gonna be using what's called like code ready containers. And so that's basically a way that you can run OpenShift on your local machine. And it just basically runs in a VM on my, on my computer. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and deploy and configure Vault in our OpenShift cluster. So to do that, we'll create an OpenShift project, which is basically like your Kubernetes namespace. Uh, we'll deploy our Helm chart. We'll enable the Kubernetes authentication method We'll go ahead and store a secret that we want to provide to our application. We'll create a policy and a role so that our application can access the secret. And um, then let's jump over to the terminal. So as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and create a Laravel, uh, sorry, an OpenShift project. Give me one second here. There we go. So we'll go ahead and create a project. So we'll just go ahead and call this uh, like vault. There we go. Um, and then we'll go ahead and install vault using the Helm chart. So I have some values already defined. So to configure vault, we'll just go ahead and provide it a little bit of configuration. So we're gonna tell it that it's running inside of OpenShift. I'm gonna enable dev mode so that the so that Vault can just boot up and we don't have to provide TLS certificates or anything like that. I'm gonna just set the root token to root so we can access it easily. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and expose the UI so we can take a look at it too. If you're running this in production, you have some different settings, but this will make it easy just for a demo. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just tell Helm to install Vault. So we're using the Helm command to install the Helm chart, which is provided by HashiCorp. And once we do that, we can go ahead and take a look within OpenShift and we should see Vault starting to boot up here. Now, since I'm running this locally without TLS setup, uh, we have to patch the route so that we can actually access it through the browser. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that real quick. And then it should just take a second for Vault to start running. And if we go ahead and open it up, we should see Vault. Perfect, so we can log into Vault now using the root token that we set. And you can see that now Vault is running inside of our Kubernetes cluster. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and jump into the pod that's running Vault and we'll configure Vault. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and enable the Kubernetes auth method within Vault. And so you just do that with a simple command and then we'll go ahead and configure it. And since we're running Vault within Kubernetes, all of the options that it needs to, to set up the integration are actually provided to this pod already. So I've got a command here we can run. So we basically provide it uh, just with a couple couple things like where Kubernetes is running, what the CA cert is, what the, the JWT token reviewer we need is. And that's kind of how Vault will be able to make sure that the tokens it's being authenticated with are actually valid. Um, then we can go ahead and just store a secret in Vault that we need to provide to our application. So when you're deploying a Laravel app, you need something called an app key. And that's basically used for encryption. So it uses it to encrypt sessions. It uses it for like CSRF and other things. And so a Laravel app can't boot without being provided an app key that it can use for that. And so we'll go ahead and store one of those in Vault. And then we can actually take a look here and retrieve the secret from within the vault UI. And you can see now that secret is stored in vault. Then we need a couple other things. So we need to create what's called a policy. And so we'll create a policy that says that, you know, if you have this policy attached to your role, then you can read from that secret. 
And then we'll go ahead and create the role we need. And so this is a Kubernetes role within Vault. And so what we're saying is, once we deploy our app, we're going to create a service account and we're going to call it Laravel app. And we're going to deploy that within the Laravel namespace. So anything that's running under that service account within that namespace within Kubernetes will be able to have access to this role within Vault. So now that we have Vault all set up and configured, we can go ahead and de deploy our Laravel app. So we'll go ahead and create another project called Laravel. And then we'll go ahead and just deploy a basic Laravel app. I have one on my GitHub uh, that I have. It's got a couple modifications to it that I'll show you. Uh, and those are more around the OpenShift deployment side of things. And so we'll go ahead and tell OpenShift to spin that up. Um, and we'll also go ahead and expose the route for it so that we can see it in our browser. Now, if we jump over to OpenShift and we take a look at the namespace, we can see that OpenShift is now building our container and it's gonna, it's gonna deploy it soon. So uh, we're just using the standard S2I method within OpenShift. So what it will do is it has a base container, it'll go ahead and build our app and it will inject it into a new, uh, new container that has Apache and stuff running in it and save that as an image and then it will deploy it to our cluster. Um, so while we're waiting for that, the way that we're gonna accomplish this is within our Laravel app, I've defined a script here that will link the environment file. So with Laravel, you can use a .m file, env file, in the root of your application to provide any configuration variables you might need. And so what I'm doing is I'm gonna go ahead and tell it that Vault is gonna be providing secrets here. And I wanna just create a sim link to where the app source is so that when the app boots, it'll be able to read the secrets from Vault. So this will take a couple more seconds to finish building the image and then we'll be able to deploy our application. So the way that this works is we'll use, we use annotations. And so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like. So on our service, on our deployment, we're gonna add some annotations. And so we're gonna say that we wanna run the Vault agent injector. And when you deploy Vault using the Helm chart, Vault will actually, the, the Helm chart contains all of these, the agent injector, and that mutating webhook that I mentioned earlier. So all of that gets deployed for you when you use the Helm chart. And so all we have to do is just say, hey, we wanna use the injector. We tell it what role the, the application should assume. This is the one that we created in Vault. And then we just tell it how we want our secrets to be rendered. So this uses what's called the console templating syntax. And we're just gonna say, we wanna grab the secret from Vault and we'll go ahead and iterate through it. And so you can store multiple key value pairs in here. And so we'll just go through each one and print them out in this sort of like environment variable syntax, which is what Laravel uses for its config. If you're using a different application, you needed to write out instead of environment variables, you need to write out like a real config file. You could just write out that config file here and use the templating syntax to inject whatever secrets you have stored in Vault already. The other thing we have to do is create that service account that I mentioned earlier. And so this is just a simple YAML file that creates a service account within Kubernetes. And it looks like our build is done. So if I jump back to our terminal, we can go ahead and create that service account using that YAML file. And then we can go ahead and we'll patch our deployment and add all of these configuration items to it. And you'll see here that I'm switching the deployment to use that new service account we just created. And so we'll go ahead and patch the deployment. And if we look in the OpenShift console, you'll see here that it's initializing our app. And what you'll see is you'll see now that because we've added those annotations, the Vault agent injector sees that, hey, you said you want Vault agent. so it will go ahead and inject that container into this pod deployment. And so you'll see, you'll see this init container and then you'll see the vault agent. So as I mentioned earlier, if you take a look at the init container, that container will get run before 
your application actually boots. And so if we look at the logs for it, you'll see that what it did was it started up Vault Agent. Vault Agent rendered out the secrets that we defined in our annotation, and then it stopped. So what that does is it goes ahead and fetches secrets from Vault. It renders them into that in-memory share that's shared into the container, and then it stops itself. So now the secrets are available to our application. So then you'll see the application boot. If we take a look at this one, you'll see it's running. And then we have this container that's now running alongside our application called the Vault Agent container. And in here, you'll actually see that the Vault Agent is running, but instead of stopping, now it's just gonna keep running alongside our application. And so anytime tokens, uh, anytime the secrets need to be updated, this agent will go ahead and do that. And there's a lot of documentation on the agent. It'll, it kind of outlines like what the different timeframes are for updating secrets, but the Vault agent is smart, to, smart enough to know that based on the TTL of your secrets, it will try and ref fetch new secrets whenever that TTL is getting close to expiring. So your application never has stale secrets. So now that we have it running, if we go ahead and take a look, we should see our application up and running here. And as you can see, we have Laravel running now within our OpenShift cluster. And if we jump into our container, we can actually take a look and see how the Vault agent has, has rendered our secrets and kind of where they are. So the Vault agent will render secrets to this Vault secrets folder within our, within our container. And if we take a look at the annotation we created, we said we want it to be stored at app-config.txt. So you'll see here that we have this file and this is the key that we had stored in Vault originally. And so what the Vault agent will do is it will constantly make sure that this is still valid. So I believe with the Vault agent, it's every five minutes if you have secrets that don't have a specific TTL. Um, so it'll make sure that this is up to date and this will get updated automatically. Um, and then you'll see in that deployment script that I created, we created that symbolic link from the, where Vault will store the secrets to our actual app source folder with that .m file. So if we jump back over here, we can see that that environment file is here with that in it. And you'll see that this is the, the sim link that we created when that container got deployed. Now, what's cool about this is since the Vault agent is constantly running and updating our secrets, you can actually use dynamic secrets too. So if you wanted to say, use the Vault MySQL engine to generate dynamic database credentials, we can actually configure that and use that with this application. And our Laravel app that's running right now has no, it's not aware that Vault's running. It doesn't know anything about Vault, but it's still able to securely use the secrets provided by Vault. So if we wanted to, we can actually deploy a MySQL server real quick and set that up for dynamic secrets and then provide those secrets to our application as well. So we'll go ahead and create a new project and we'll call it MySQL. And then we can just use the OpenShift UI to deploy a simple MySQL server. So we'll just set up an ephemeral server since we don't need to, to persist any data. And we'll go ahead and give, give it a root password. Um, we'll let this server boot up. It should only take a few seconds. And in the meantime, what we can do is we can jump back into that vault container and we'll go ahead and configure vault for dynamic secrets now. So we'll enable the database secrets engine and then we'll provide it the connection information to this database instance that's now running. So we're just gonna go ahead and tell it that we wanna use the MySQL database plugin we're gonna give it the connection URL. We're gonna tell it what the allowed roles are to access this engine. And then we're gonna give it the credentials to the database. And then we'll go ahead and create the role. And so what this role is, is the role will say, hey, if you request a secret, we're gonna use the MySQL database that we defined here. It's gonna give the creation statement. And so this is actually the SQL it's gonna to execute to create a user. So this is how you can say, Instead of doing select on start.star, .star, you can say, you know, this role will only grant access to a specific database. And then you can define the TTLs. And so, so you can see the secrets refresh. I set them to a minute, but obviously you'd want to set this to something longer, like at least an hour probably. 
Um, and then the last thing we have to do is just update that policy that we had created before to provide access to this secret as well as the, the config that we created before. And so now that we have this set up, all we have to do is modify that secret template, the console template that we created before. And we're just gonna add to it with secret database creds Laravel app. And this is based on the role that we had defined up here. And then we're just gonna read the username and password out of it and write those out as environment variables in the format that Laravel is expecting them in. So now if we jump into our terminal and we go ahead and patch our deployment with that new config, sorry, we have to jump over to the Laravel namespace first. Then if we patch our deployment, you'll see that OpenShift is gonna recreate our deployment and it's gonna initialize the pod. And then now if we jump over to the terminal and we go ahead and take a look at the secrets that were written out, you'll see now that we actually have dynamic database credentials being provided by Vault. And if we take a look at the, the Vault agent that's running, if we go ahead and look at its logs, you'll see that it's, it rendered out the secret. Now, the Vault agent knows when those database credentials are supposed to expire. And so when they're getting ready to expire, it's gonna go ahead and renew them. So it's gonna ask Vault for a new set of credentials and it's gonna write those out to a file. And so it looks like it just did that right here. So if we jump back to our terminal and we read this file again, we'll actually see that the credentials have changed because Vault has refreshed them and the agent saw that and wrote them out to our, our environment file again. And so that's kind of how you can use Vault and the, the Helm charts and the Vault agent injector to kind of deliver secrets to your application securely without the application actually even being aware that Vault is running. And so that's kind of the power of the Helm charts that we have. And I think they're really cool. It kind of just makes this super easy to use and super easy to deploy. And so for the Laravel app, just a quick summary of what we did, we just created an OpenShift project. We created a deployment. We created a service account. We enabled the Vault agent injector using those annotations. Uh, we configured dynamic secrets. And that's kind of how you can get Vault running inside of Kubernetes, delivering secrets to your application in a super easy way. I think we took like about 15 minutes to get all of that running. Obviously it's a little bit different for production, but the concepts are all very similar. It's just about persisting data and running more replicas and, and kind of everything else. So yeah, that's, that's my talk. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I think we have a little bit of time left if anyone has any questions or anything like that. Yeah, we have just a bit of time. Um, while we're waiting for questions to come in, I'm wondering um, if you could tell us what your biggest lesson learned was while going through this process. My biggest lesson learned, let's see, that's a good question. So I think, I think that initially I thought that it would be really hard to, to get this all working. Um, I was like, you know, this, this all sounds like really cool. Like it just kind of does everything like magically, like how do you get it to work, right? Like how do we, I'm like, I actually like hadn't used Kubernetes very much back when I started this. And I just kind of dove into some of the guides and just started messing around. And I was like, wow, this is actually not as hard as I thought. Um, it was, it was kind of like when you can run Kubernetes locally on your machine and just like do whatever you want and not be worried about breaking production, then, you know, it makes it easy to, to actually play around and experiment. Right on, right on. Um, lots of feedback saying great talk uh, while we're waiting for, for questions in case um, more come in. Yeah, serious, for sure. Serious question. Um, <laughs> cube cuddle or cube CTL? I say CTL. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> so if somebody says Laravel with Vault is cool like jazz. <laughs>
It is. Um, <laughs> that's uh, that's probably my friend. I think that's an inside joke. <laughs> Oh man, can't you explain like some of it? I can explain it. Yeah. So it it was me and my friend and we, uh, we took a a Java class when we were in high school together and it, the, the teacher had a a PowerPoint deck that he sent out. And when we, when we started watching it, the, the deck just started playing jazz music and the instructor was just like, Java is cool like jazz. And that was like the intro to our, our Java class. So Oh man, that's, that's it's controversial. <laughs> Very. Jazz is way cooler than Java. <laughs> I, I think I agree. Good, good. So Shabna asks, where's Bender? Oh, where's Bender? That is my dog. He is somewhere <laughs> around here. Do you want to say hi, Bender? Come oh, here. please. Yeah, I can grab him and he can say hi. Why not? Oh, come here, buddy. There he is. Oh, hello, Bender. <laughs> <laughs> yep, this is Bender. He's seven. <laughs> so fluffy. Go look over there. There you go. <laughs> so while, while we're waiting for, for more serious questions, what's next? Like, do, do you have any more plans for, for playing around with this? Or, or do you have another project yeah. in mind? Yeah, so uh, I have some plans that would be cool. So... Right now, this just kind of injects the secrets into that environment file, which is fine, but I kind of want to be able to see if there's a way that I can inject the secrets into, instead of in a file that the Laravel app reads into like actual environment variables that whatever the, the web server is or whatever can actually pick those up on its own. Um, and the other thing I think would be cool is Laravel and other frameworks have a way to cache the configuration, which makes the performance like way better. And right now, if you were to cache the configuration, when the secrets change, it wouldn't be able to pick those up. Um, And when you're running Vault Agent on an actual server where the agent is running within the same context as your web server, you can actually have it run commands and say like, oh, I want you to like recache the configuration or I want you to reboot my web server. But when you're running it in Kubernetes, those commands get executed executed in the container that agent is running in. and so I'm looking for a good way to be able to, to either restart the, the container running the app or kind of run those commands within the actual container running the app so we can, can cache the configuration and things like that. And so cool. that might be another, another talk some other time. Nice, nice. Look forward to that. Yeah. Um, well, it doesn't really look like there are any other questions, so we'll, we'll let you kind of get to it. Please uh, continue along with us, but thank you so much for, for sharing your knowledge and, and joining us. And uh, we wish you the best. Of course, thank you. <laughs>